Dr. Jimena. Yeah, good evening, everyone. May I have your attention? The webinar is about to start. This is Dr. Jumana, neurologist from Saudi Arabia. First of all, on behalf of uh, International League Against Epilepsy, uh, Eastern Mediterranean and Africa, I would like to welcome you all to this webinar. Today, our speaker, Dr. Zenebigas, and panelist, Dr. Noura Jalal, epileptologist from the Medical Complex from Saudi Arabia. In this occasion, we would like to have presentation about epilepsy in pregnancy. And if you have any question throughout the webinar, please write it in the Q&A box and there will be opportunity to have your questions answered at the end. And uh, before presentation begins, allow me to introduce the speaker, Dr. Zinevigas. Dr. Mihila Zinevigas graduated 2008 from neurology department at Ababa from Ethiopia. She is a member of Ethiopian Medical Association, Association of Ethiopian Neurologists, and a member of Medical Women International Association and the American Academy of Neurology. She is a distinguished physician, and she has many uh, publications and awards in her field. Uh, currently, she is adjunct associate of neurology at neurology department at the Sababa University, uh, honorary staff at the Internal Medicine Department, College of Medicine at and Health Science, Dean's Office, uh, Gondar University, University since 2014, and Medical Director of Specialty Clinic in Addis Ababa. Uh, without further, uh, further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Zenebigas uh, to deliver the presentation. All right, Dr. Zenebigas, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you and good evening to you all. Welcome to today's webinar on epilepsy. My name is Dr. Mahilla. I am an internist and a neurologist by profession. As you know, this is a vast topic and I'll try to cover most important issues related to women with epilepsy with the hope that you will have some helpful take home messages. Before I start, I wanted to mention that I have nothing to disclose. Point five percent of pregnant women, roughly one in 20, uh, in general have epilepsy, but more than 90% of uh, this woman will have normal delivery. So seizures in pregnancy mainly res result from three conditions. First and most frequent is uncontrolled pre-existing seizures. The second cause of seizure in pregnancy is structural and metabolic changes that may precipitate new onset seizures during pregnancy, which includes uh, stroke, hemorrhage, CVT, cerebral venous sinus disease, thrombosis, uh, infections, hypoglycemia, and the like. The third is pregnancy-related conditions and especially uh, eclampsia. Most of today's presentation is about the first one, that is pre-existing seizure in pregnant women. The outline of my presentation will be going through the four stages of pregnancy, that is pre-pregnancy stage, antepartum, intrapartum, and postpartum period. And I'll go through different topics under each. Uh, the frequent abbreviations that I'm going to use in this uh, presentation is uh, ASM, which stands for anti-seizure medications, and WWE, which stands for women with epilepsy. Contraception and uh, anti-seizure medications have a bidirectional effect. Women with uh, epilepsy should be aware that uh, hormonal contraceptive failures may occur uh, with en enzyme-inducing anti-seizure uh, medications. Uh, and these medications induce hepatic cytochrome P50 uh, system and uh, of mention here are drugs like carbamazepine, phenytoin, phenobarb, 
ፕሪሚዶን ቶፒራሜት ኤንድ ኦክስካርባዘፒን WHO suggests that women taking enzyme inducing anti seizure drugs including lamotrigine should use a method of contraception other than hormonal pills patches or rings um, highly effective alternatives uh, such as the long acting reversible contraceptives including copper and levo norgestrol uh, intrauterine devices which carry um, almost no or very less uh, potential for drug drug interaction should be used women uh, taking enzyme inducing anti seizure medications especially the older ones and a few of the newer ones uh, have an increased risk of contraceptive failure uh, from which increase from 0.7 to uh, 3 per 100 person per year uh, so even though it's unconfirmed in systematic studies for women taking enzyme inducing anti seizure drugs who have no alternative to uh, oral contraceptive some clinicians uh, use uh, alternative methods like increasing the dose of uh, oral contraceptive pill or use of extended cycle regimens with shorter uh, pill free interval uh, and sometimes use preparations with at least 50 microgram of estrogen uh, instead of 20 or 30. This is a table showing the lists of uh, contraceptive methods that are not affected by the enzyme inducing anti epileptic drugs. Uh, this table shows um, the anti epileptic drug affecting or not affecting uh, hormonal contraceptives. Um, of the drugs that uh, decrease the effectiveness uh, of hormonal contraceptive is lamotrigine. Lamotrigine is a non enzyme inducing anti epileptic drug, but it's uh, included in the list that affects uh, hormonal contraceptive. The major route of elimination um, of lamotrigine is a process called uh, glucuronidation but this system is also induced by ethylene estradiol of the uh, uh, contraceptive pill so the clearance is increased by two folds when lamotrigine is used in conjunction with uh, cont uh, hormonal contraceptive pills so if a woman is started on a hormonal contraception while on a stable uh, maintenance lamotrigine dose uh, since the clearance is going to be increased the dose of lamotrigine may need to be increased as high as two folds and the reverse is true if a woman uh, while was was on hormonal contraception and uh, but wanted to stop the contraception and was on a maintenance dose of lamotrigine the dose should be reduced by 50 percent to reduce to prevent uh, toxicity of lamotrigine what about Folic acid. Um, folic acid is a coenzyme for uh, useful for the development of uh, white and red cells as well as uh, several functions uh, in the CNS. Uh, folic acid synonym, uh, is uh, synonymous with uh, folate or vitamin B9. Uh, has several uh, foods that um, supply it like beef, uh, leafy vegetables, legumes. Uh, egg, milk, avocado, and the like. Um, of note, uh, here is uh, unrecognized vitamin B12 deficiency. In women with pre existing megaloblastic anemia, it's important to rule out B12 deficiency before administering folic acid uh, because um, uh, B12 deficiency uh, may be allowed to progress into neurologic abnormalities if not treated concomitantly. And uh, folic acid deficiency uh, supplementation may not prevent all neural tube defects. Uh, neural tube defects such as those uh, which are related with chromosomal abnormalities and uh, other mechanisms uh, arising from non-folate uh, 
neural tube defects may not be prevented by supplementing folic acid. In general, the incidence of uh, um, there is increased incidence of uh, uh, deficiency um, for uh, uh, fetus uh, when using when when folic acid deficiency is there. So some of the uh, deficiency, the, some of the disease that can be seen uh, with folic acid deficiency are uh, low birth weight, premature delivery, miscarriages. Uh, congenital malformations and preeclampsia uh, incidence will be increased. Neural tube defects are uh, severe birth defects of the central nervous system. Uh, they originate uh, during embryogenesis and uh, result from uh, failure of uh, closure of neural tube. Uh, these are uh, the uh, anencephaly, uh, spina, bif spin spina bifida and encephalocele. Uh, these are uh, preventable with folic acid supplementation. Another way of preventing um, neural tube defect is uh, folic acid fortification. Fortification is a way uh, of adding vitamins or minerals uh, to foods that are uh, staple for uh, most of the country's population. Each country sets standards to include specific nutrients and vitamins to its population needs. For example, um, foods like flour, rice, oil, and the like can be used. The health benefits of uh, folic acid is well documented. Um, in, for example, in the United States, uh, fortification of uh, cereals and grains with folic acid uh, was, man, uh, was mandated in 1998 to prevent uh, neural tube defect during pregnancy. Um, on the other hand, many countries have not implemented folic acid fortification. Uh, CDC is working now with the WHO and other partners on uh, a global initiative uh, to fortify uh, foods to prevent um, neural tube defects. If uh, global fortification of neural tube defect could be achieved, the uh, about 150,000 to 200 neural tube defects can be prevented yearly. In my country, Ethiopia, um, the incidence of neural tube defects per 10,000 life births is about 125 to 130, uh, which exceeds the WHO maximum allowable rate, no, rate of 5 per uh, 10,000. Uh, also, uh, it was found out that uh, RBC folate deficiency in women of reproductive age was 32% in this same study. Thus, uh, August of this year, the Ethiopian Standard Council endorsed mandatory fortification of edible oil and wheat flour uh, to save millions of lives and to prevent neural tube defects uh, because of the country's high burden of neural tube defect. Um, another uh, one uh, recent uh, uh, study about prevention of neural tube defect by fortification of wheat flour uh, with folic acid, uh, a, a study from Brazil, a population-based study, which was published in 2016, uh, uh, did a research to determine the prevalence of neural tube defects pre-fortification and post-fortification era. And the overall prevalence of folic acid dropped um, if, uh, neural tube defect uh, dropped from 0.79 to 0.55 per uh, 1,000 um, life births, uh, and they concluded that this is a significant reduction in the prevalence of neural tube defect uh, by fortifying um, flour. While a large majority um, 
support folic acid fortification, some researchers have conflicting results. For example, the Food uh, Fortification Initiative, which is a public-private uh, civic partnership, which provided technical assistance to governments and regional bodies about uh, food fortification and implementation, um, uh, studied their database, uh, which ran from uh, which ran for about uh, seven years. They they found out that the national fortification with folic acid was not associated with a significant decrease in the prevalence of neural tube defect. And they mentioned here uh, their concern regarding B12 deficiency, especially in the elderly, uh, in conjunction with higher cell folate, were associated with anemia and cognitive impairment because of B12 deficiency. Um, so the existing um, guidelines uh, recommend uh, about folic acid supplementation. I, this table was adopted from uh, up-to-date guideline 2018. So folate uh, supplementation in general should be started before getting pregnant. Time to start ranges from uh, four weeks up to three months prior to conception. The duration also of treatment ranges from 12 weeks uh, to, to throughout the pregnancy. Uh, sometimes even uh, uh, extending to lactation. So this guideline categorizes women into three groups, low, moderate, and high-risk uh, group for uh, folate deficiency. And the high-risk groups are recommended to take uh, four milligrams of uh, folic acid, um, maybe one to three months prior to conception. Low-risk uh, pregnancy, uh, could be started with uh, a 0.4 or 0.8 microgram, a milligram of folic acid um, uh, prior to conception. So uh, the, the higher risk groups are uh, uh, higher risk groups of women who are at increased risk of uh, develop new, developing new neural tube defects are uh, women with a previous child of neural tube defect and uh, women who are taking anti-seizure medication, medications and specifically carbamazepine and valporate. So how well sh should uh, seizures uh, be controlled? Uh, researchers at the Department of uh, Neurology in uh, Azerbaijan Medical School uh, studied 105 women with epilepsy uh, in a prospective study over a period of four years. Um, so they they had 15 percent, 15 women on follow-up uh, who had a seizure-free one year prior to pregnancy, and this woman, this uh, of the 15, 11 women remained seizure-free uh, during the pregnancy. Uh, pregnant women who have um, experienced seizure in the year prior to conception, on the other hand, required uh, close monitoring of uh, their uh, epilepsy. But in this research as well, they have found out that focal epilepsy was associated with an increased risk of seizure relapse during pregnancy. Uh, the next part of the presentation is about issues during epilepsy, uh, I mean pregnancy, and especially about the effects of pregnancy on epilepsy uh, the, and the effect of seizure on pregnancy. Uh, I also will say a few words on congenital malformation from uh, risks of anti-seizure medication exposures and the long-term neurodevelopmental outcomes for children exposed to anti-seizure medications in utero and few words on uh, serum anti-epileptic drug level changes during uh, pregnancy. Um, uh, two papers on uh, the effect of pregnancy uh, on epilepsy uh, have had similar finding. One uh, paper uh, 
published on a Belgian Neurological Society uh, journal found out that in 15% uh, of the time seizure frequency remain unchanged um, and close to a third had increased frequency, a quarter had decreased frequency and 30% became seizure free uh, while uh, on follow-up. Uh, as uh, the other study um, I mentioned before uh, from Azerbaijan uh, mentioned that uh, the two-thirds of women with pre-existing epilepsy did not have worsening uh, of seizure during their follow-up. Only a third of uh, patients had an increase in seizure frequency. Uh, the cause of increased uh, seizure frequency in pregnancy um, are mostly related to changes uh, during uh, anti-seizure uh, medication pharmacokinetics. Uh, that's due to either enhanced metabolism or increased volume of distribution, uh, hormonal changes, or um, serum binding protein increase. Uh, some other issues related uh, 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 mentioned as a cause of increased frequency are uh, emotional stress, uh, sleep deprivation, uh, nausea, vomiting, and in some uh, women, uh, decreased compliance for fear of uh, malformation for the uh, unborn child. Um, a growing number of literature indicates that uh, perinatal uh, morbidity and mortality are increased uh, among women with uh, epilepsy as compared with the general population. Uh, partial seizures do not carry much risk as uh, the generalized seizures. Um, and seizures uh, during delivery time occur in about 2% of the cases, and uh, this can cause uh, fetal heart rate slowing. Uh, and complications that arise uh, during um, pregnancy from seizures range from uh, mild to severe degree and include things like preeclampsia, preterm labor, bleeding, abruption, full fet uh, fetal growth, and the like. Uh, in general, uh, patients with epilepsy um, have uh, a small risk of a sudden unexpected death, uh, which is called uh, SUDEP. Um, this is also generally true for the general population, and women are uh, no exception. Uh, this condition um, is defined as a sudden unexpected uh, witness or unwitnessed uh, non-traumatic, non-drowning days in patients with epilepsy, with or uh, without evidence of uh, seizure. Uh, and uh, in, in, the, in the studied cases, post-mortem examination did not reveal a structural or a toxicology uh, cause of days. So this, uh, condition is noted, this condition is noted to be increased in uh, pregnant women, increasing uh, maternal mortality. So uh, mortality, morbidity during uh, delivery hospitalization among pregnant women with epilepsy in the United States a study uh, found out that uh, um, in a ret retrospective court study uh, found out that uh, uh, of the uh, over the four year period uh, about an 11.5 uh, uh, percent risk or tenfold increased risk of days among um, women who have been uh, hospitalized for delivery. Uh, other uh, obstetrical outcomes or were also noted to be increased, uh, like the caesarean section rate was increased, uh, the length of stay in hospital was uh, increased, and preeclampsia, preterm labor, and stillbirths were also noted to be high in this study. Few studies have been performed on the direct effects of maternal seizure uh, on the fetus. Uh, fetal hypoxia may occur as a result of decreased placental blood flow or uh, post-ictal uh, apnea, but uh, information is lacking on the number and length of uh, seizures that may uh, uh, harm the fetus. 
one report of fetal heart rate monitoring during a maternal generalized tonic-clonic seizure, which lasted about 2.5 minutes, revealed significant fetal heart rate slowing, uh, which lasted up to 30 uh, minutes after the seizure even stopped. Uh, even though uh, non-convulsive seizures are believed to be less dangerous, uh, one study all, uh, was uh, noted that uh, even with uh, complex partial seizure, fetal bradycardia uh, during uh, a one-minute uh, complex partial seizure uh, was uh, uh, noted. Uh, injury to the fetus, uh, abruption of placenta miscarriages due to maternal trauma uh, are also effects, uh, some uh, untoward, uh, unwanted effects that can be seen. Um, epileptic seizures during pregnancy marginally may be associated with uh, low birth weight, uh, low uh, birth weight or small for gestational age infants. Low Apgar score, microcephaly, respiratory uh, issues, and increased admission to neonatal ICU was also noted uh, uh, for fetus born to epileptic mothers. What about inheritance? Uh, um, uh, one good paper that uh, estimated familiar risk uh, of uh, epilepsy comes from uh, a Rochester epidemiology project. Uh, this is a population-based study that included uh, 660 individuals uh, and their 250 first, 2,500 first-degree relatives. Um, Although epilepsy uh, was uh, 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 rarely shows Mendelian type of uh, inheritance, uh, first degree relatives of patients with idiopathic epilepsy had uh, roughly two to threefold elevated risk of being affected. Uh, and the risk was highest for uh, relatives with generalized epilepsy. Uh, and it was lowest for relatives of those uh, people who have focal epilepsy. And the cumulative incidence of any form of epilepsy uh, by age 40 was 4.5%, uh, uh, which is three times um, more than the general uh, population, which was about 1.5%. Um, Anti-epileptic uh, anti drugs uh, have also uh, long-term neurodevelopmental outcomes um, on uh, uh, children born to mothers exposed to anti-epileptic drugs. Uh, women who are taking anti-seizure medications uh, may have slightly higher incidence of having babies with birth defects. The general population have a 2 to 3 percent, while uh, women uh, taking anti seizure medications can have a 4 to 6 percent of uh, increased risk of uh, having children with birth defects. Uh, and this effect is actually uh, drug uh, dependent and uh, dose dependent. And most of the data on uh, the teratogenic effects of anti seizure medications is collected from uh, epilepsy registries, epilepsy in pregnancy. So I'll say a few words about epilepsy and pregnancy registries. Uh, the first uh, report on uh, possible teratogenic effects of anti seizure medications was published in 1960s. Uh, the risk uh, that medication can harm uh, their children has been a major concern for all women with epilepsy con uh, considering pregnancy and data was scarce um, uh, which, necessi which uh, necessitated the rational uh, management of epilepsy uh, in women of childbearing age uh, and potential uh, prompted the establishment of uh, epilepsy and pregnancy registries. Although slightly different in their uh, methodologies, the registries are typically prospective observational studies uh, which aimed to enroll a large number of pregnancies with exposure to anti-seizure medications. 
the common objective of these registries is to assess risk of major congenital malformations associated with different types of treatments. There are four major uh, national or regional registries and one international registry. The European and International Registry of Antiepileptic Drug in Pregnancy was launched uh, in Europe in 1999. Uh, at a later date, it extended to uh, include um, international um, uh, countries included um, worldwide. The aim was to collect data on risk of antiepileptic drugs during pregnancy. Um, physicians from 46 countries in Europe, Oceania, Asia, Latin America, Africa have participated in this study. Uh, they have more than 28,000 pregnancies registered so far. Um, they still actively register uh, different uh, countries. Uh, the green ones are uh, inactive, but the yellow ones are on ongoing uh, registries. The North American Anti-Epileptic Drug Pregnancy Registry was established in 1997. It was the first hospital-based registry based in, uh, based in uh, Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Uh, it's, uh, it has registered over uh, 13,500 women uh, until February of 2021. The United Kingdom Epilepsy and Pregnancy Registry was established in 1996. Uh, a total of 6,200 pregnancies have uh, been included uh, in this registry. The Australian Pregnancy Registry uh, was founded in 1999. Uh, it ran, it was, it's still running for over 16 years, uh, has registered uh, 2,000 pregnancies, uh, and um, the methodology uh, is almost similar to the European ones, and they also share data, uh, but also they uh, published independently as well. Uh, the Kerala Registry is a regional registry launch, launched in uh, um, southern India in 1999. Uh, they have more than 1,000 pregnancies re registered to date. Uh, they have uh, uh, similar um, methodology like the European Registry. Uh, so most data uh, are generated from these registries as well as um, uh, in individualized uh, papers um, for the, for the uh, uh, risks of fetal malformation. Uh, so it was noted that the risk of fetal malformation is strongly influenced by anti-seizure medications and in particular exposure to valporate, phenytoin, carbamazepine, Phenobarbiton, topiramate uh, have been associated with the higher incidence of fetal malformations. And polytherapy, uh, which means taking more than one anti-seizure drugs, has a major malformation risk uh, increasing from 6 to 8 uh, percent. And regimens that contain valporate and topiramate represent particularly very high risk for fetal malformation. Um, more risk is also seen with the uh, positive family history of birth defect, uh, low folate level, and low maternal level of education, uh, as well as the gestational time of uh, exposure, uh, as well as the dose of um, anti-seizure drugs are uh, important risks. In the UK and the Australian uh, registries, uh, studies have shown that uh, women taking valporic acid uh, who had a previous child with a major congenital malformation uh, had a recurrent risk of approximately 50% if they uh, continue taking valporic acid or valporic in subsequent pregnancies. 
So finding from the European drug registry, uh, uh, the European pregnancy in epilepsy registry studies showed uh, um, that uh, from 7,555 uh, pregnancies that were uh, registered from uh, June uh, 1999 to May uh, 2016, uh, the prevalence of major congenital malformations in children exposed uh, to anti-seizure medications. Uh, the highest was for, for, for uh, valproic acid and the lowest um, were from lamotrigine and levetiracetam. In the same paper, uh, dose dependency in the prevalence of major congenital malformation was identified for carbamazepine, lamotrigine, phenobarb, and valporate. Um, lamotrigine at a dose of less than 325 mg a day has a 2.5% uh, risk while a dose uh, of more than 325 would increase the risk to 4.3. A valporic acid dose of 1,500 has uh, a very high risk of 25.2 percent. The most common major congenital malformations associated with anti-seizure drugs are the neural tube defects but uh, others like congenital heart defects, uh, urinary tract defects, skeletal abnormalities, cleft lip and palate are also uh, uh, seen. Uh, on the other hand, the risk of certain dysmorphic features, uh, generally considered uh, minor malformations, uh, associated with the administration of anti seizure drugs is less clear. There is uh, an accumulating evidence that anticonvulsant treatment during pregnancy uh, may have uh, um, a negative effect on the uh, cognitive and neurologic uh, functions of the offspring that may manifest in their later life. And valporate is the most strongly associated with adverse cognitive and developmental outcome. Um, several studies have illustrated this. Um, at age three, uh, children exposed with valporic acid had an IQ score that were on average six to nine points lower than those exposed with uh, lamotrigine, phenytoin, or carbamazepine alone. These findings uh, persisted even at uh, uh, age of six. And uh, another study uh, of uh, in utero exposure of, of valporic Valporate as a monotherapy was associated with a lower uh, mental and motor developmental uh, function as well uh, as a lower mean average language test score as compared with a monotherapy uh, only with carbamazepine uh, or uh, levetiracetam or other monotherapies. So based on uh, this and many other studies, uh, this image shows uh, the choice of anti-seizure medications based on the risk of teratogenicity. Uh, the green being safe, which contains lamotrigine and levetiracetam, uh, and the red uh, being avoid, uh, which is valporic acid. Uh, this table is adapted from uh, uh, therapeutic advances in neurological disorder. Um, it shows the same thing, uh, lamotrigine uh, and levetiracetam are the drugs of choice for uh, use of, uh, uh, for use in girls and women with epilepsy in uh, childbearing age. A few words on serum uh, level change during pregnancy. Several factors lead to uh, increased anti-seizure medication clearance during pregnancy. So uh, some of these are uh, decreased absorption, increased volume of distribution, uh, hepatic enzyme induction uh, of the cytochrome P50 system, as well as enhanced glucuronidation uh, by sex steroid hormones, and also increased renal filtration, uh, all affect the uh, uh, 
increased uh, anti-seizure medication clearance. Uh, if available, both total and free plasma drug levels should be checked. Um, the recommended frequency of testing is uh, the first uh, uh, five or six weeks uh, uh, of pregnancy and then at week 10 and subsequently at least once in each trimester. Uh, blood levels are better drawn first thing in the morning and to determine the individualized target and seizure medication concentration range uh, will guide personalized dose adjustments during pregnancy. And to help minimize the level of fluct uh, fluctuation, extended release formulations and sometimes twice daily or even uh, more frequent uh, daily dosing uh, may be preferred. Uh, if a patient uh, um, has uh, vomiting, uh, the, the, the dose should be repeated uh, and sometimes undigested pills, if noted, uh, should also be uh, redosed. A mode of delivery in general uh, uh, is recommended to be spontaneous vaginal delivery. Um, indication for cesarean section is uh, in most cases obstetrical indication, but sometimes poor seizure control during pregnancy could be uh, another indication for cesarean section. Uh, also, uh, high risk of uh, high risk for uh, of seizure during labor that could compromise delivery is another indication for. Uh, performing cesarean section. Epidural uh, anesthesia is recommended uh, either during labor or uh, cesarean delivery and uh, may even lower the risk of seizure by reducing stress and pain. Uh, use of prostada, uh, prostaglandin for induction of labor is not contraindicated. The benefits of breastfeeding uh, both for Mother and child is uh, widely documented and acknowledged. Despite these benefits, uh, only 42% of women with epilepsy breastfeed at three months. And uh, women with epilepsy discontinue breastfeeding more often than women without epilepsy. Uh, it presents uh, a high variability depending on different factors, such as mis misconception, um, Um, uh, that the drugs taken um, uh, may, may, may be re, uh, uh, retained in the breast milk. So education about the safety and benefit of breastfeeding uh, may be under-recognized by patients, obstetricians, and even pediatricians. So uh, patients are afraid of uh, anti-seizure medication side effects. Uh, um, so, so these are one, some of the reasons for um, not breastfeeding are uh, un fear of anti-seizure medication side effects. Um, maybe because women have frequent seizures, uh, there is insufficient breast mil milk supply, as well as discouragement from social support. Um, and uh, maternal child health problems are important issues identified for not breastfeeding. Uh, overall, uh, there is a significantly higher uh, IQ in breastfed infants versus no, not breastfed even at age six. This table is um, again adapted from therapeutic advances in neurological disorder uh, about uh, breastfeeding during um, while taking anti-seizure medication. Uh, safe drugs uh, mentioned in this uh, uh, guideline are carbamazepine, uh, phenytoin, and uh, valforate. Um, uh, there are some uh, moderately safe uh, medications as well. Uh, the enzyme-inducing anti-seizure drugs, uh, 
such as phenobarbitone, phenytoin, carbamazepine, uh, they cross the placenta and may increase the rate of uh, oxidative degradation of vitamin K in the fetus. And this, uh, this can, uh, this can uh, induce um, bleeding uh, disease of the newborn. So some authors recommend a prophylactic vitamin K uh, supplementation during the last months of uh, pregnancy to a woman with the risk of uh, premature delivery, um, multiple anti-seizure drugs, enzyme-inducing anti-seizure medications, or alcohol abuse during pregnancy. Um, it's recommended to supplement <coughs> women with the 10 to 20 milligram per day of uh, vitamin K orally. Uh, in general, all newborns must receive a 1 milligram of vitamin K uh, intramuscular shots at birth. Um, the American Academy of Pediatrics uh, recommended this um, since 1991, and they have stood um, by this recommendation because they uh, believe the risk of uh, one shot wouldn't outweigh, outweigh the risk of vitamin K bleeding uh, disorder of the newborn. If there is an um, incidence of bleeding that occurs in newborn, fresh frozen plasma can be used. One recently published paper, uh, which is a um, which, uh, which is published in 2021 on uh, perinatal uh, the journal of pediatric and perinatology child health uh, in um, studied about uh, 1037 um, women uh, into two groups and one group had uh, neonates uh, of women with uh, epilepsy uh, who are taking enzyme inducing anti seizure medications and the control group consisted of newborns not exposed to anti-seizure medications. Uh, in this study, um, the two groups did not differ regarding hemorrhagic complication in the newborn. Hemorrhagic complication, on the other hand, were more prevalent in newborns with low birth weight and uh, in uh, multiple uh, births or uh, twins and triplets. Um, so, in, in, in this paper, uh, antenatal vitamin K prophylaxis may not be necessary in all women with anti-seizure drugs. On the other hand, uh, oral vitamin K is relatively cheap and harmless. Uh, the, in 2009, American Academy of Neurology guideline concluded that uh, there is uh, there was not uh, sufficient evidence to, to recommend uh, for or uh, against giving vitamin K uh, orally for uh, women with epilepsy at the last months of their pregnancy. Um, in order to see the uh, um, use of vitamin K in uh, low and middle income country, an online survey uh, was done. Um, and using email to 109 individuals, uh, stakeholders involved in newborn health. Uh, the response rate was um, only 21% in this uh, research, uh, but uh, respondents were generally um, from uh, professionals from Sub-Saharan Africa and uh, Asia. And uh, in this paper, it was con concluded that prophylactic administration of vitamin K to newborns was relatively well integrated into policy. Uh, but it's the practice of uh, uh, administering vitamin K uh, was underutilized. And the barriers for this were mentioned to be um, access, uh, supply chain logistic issues, um, the provider uh, attitude and restriction of use of injection by providers at the community level. Uh, 
Google Scholar search for um, papers on epilepsy in women in sub-Saharan Africa um, returned only few papers. I'll just mention a few here. Uh, one paper I found uh, was published in Neurology Journal by my colleague Dr. Hannah Demse, who did uh, a descriptive hospital-based cross-sectional study uh, through interviewing and reviewing clinical data of women with epilepsy uh, at Neurology Referral Clinic in Black Lion Hospital um, over an eight-month period. Uh, it was found out that uh, women-related uh, issues um, of epilepsy were under-treated, under-recognized, and most women uh, did not have enough knowledge. Uh, so 180 women were included in the study. Only two of them received folic acid. 70% uh, were on uh, monotherapy and 5% were on valproic acid. Vitamin K was not provided in all. And 75% um, of the uh, women continued anti-epileptic medications during labor and delivery. 83% uh, were breastfed, but almost half of the women did not have enough knowledge about um, uh, issues of um, epilepsy in uh, uh, pregnancy. Uh, another paper, uh, important paper uh, I found was uh, uh, titled Women with Epilepsy in Sub-Saharan Africa. It was um, a review of uh, the reproductive health challenges and perspectives for management. Um, they also, uh, they used, uh, they retrieved data uh, from online search uh, until, the, until June of 2019. Uh, and they generally found out that women with epilepsy in uh, sub-Saharan Africa were stigmatized and sexually exploited uh, than women without epilepsy. Uh, contraception use in uh, women with epilepsy was only reported in uh, two papers. Um, neonatal outcomes uh, were uh, also investigated only in, in two of the retrieved papers. Um, Anti-epileptic drug use, uh, um, major congenital malformations were reported in some, but there was no report found about uh, preconceptual uh, counseling and postnatal outcome. So they concluded in this paper that uh, there is a need for uh, evidence-based clinical guidelines and col collaborative approaches. Uh, for uh, treatment of women with epilepsy in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, there is also a high uh, risk of uh, congenital malformation and drug interaction with the first-line anti-epileptic drugs, and uh, this also warranted uh, for the provision of safer second-line uh, anti-seizure medications as an alternative. So a few take-home messages. Um, the, uh, the next uh, few slides uh, were adapted from uh, the resource I found very useful. It contains a summary table uh, regarding the management of women with uh, epilepsy. Um, so during the planning phase uh, um, for pregnancy, uh, and a few recommendations from this paper is uh, to choose anti-seizure medications uh, for epilepsy who have, um, uh, who, which has the lowest teratogenic uh, risk. Doses should be titrated to the lowest effective dose and individualized uh, therapeutic approaches should be used. Uh, if possible, always use monotherapy over polytherapy. Uh, there are some preferable drugs like lamotrigin and levetiracetam uh, and avoid drugs like valproic acid. Uh, folic acid supplementation is uh, recommended to prevent neural tube defects and uh, high dose is suggested uh, for certain groups of uh, women 
with high risk for neural tube defects. During pregnancy, um, uh, women with epilepsy should plan at least three clinical visits uh, if seizures are stable, but otherwise more frequent visits with uh, obstetrician and neurologist should be there. Uh, Anti-seizure medication drug levels should be monitored and the dose adjusted uh, based on uh, uh, findings. Um, ultrasound screening or organ sc screening are recommended uh, on the 19th and 21st gestational week. Uh, data on vitamin K prophylaxis uh, and perinatal uh, bleeding outcome are controversial, but uh, in general it's recommended to be on the safer side. Um, vaginal delivery is generally uh, recommended and epidural anesthesia is also encouraged. Um, caesarean section is only indicated uh, for obstetric indication or when uh, seizure control is poor in pregnancy and uh, when there is a high risk of uh, seizure during uh, labor which can compromise the outcome. Uh, management the, during the postpartum period, uh, a drug monitoring is also suggested in the first week postpartum uh, to adjust anti-seizure medication uh, uh, dosage. Um, the effects from uh, sleep deprivation during breastfeeding uh, and uh, anti-seizure medication dosage should be adjusted uh, slightly based on uh, um, possible outcomes and breastfeeding is highly recommended um, and strategies to have a good sleep uh, should be implemented. Uh, thank you all for listening. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Zabegas, uh, for informative and interesting talk. Uh, now we'll go to the um, a question. Uh, uh, what's the drug choice uh, that you use in the juvenile clinic epilepsy? Uh, so, so Dihar ask the, what's the drug of choice in uh, juvenile clinic epilepsy in pregnant women? Yes, Dr. Zanabegas. Uh, thank you for that uh, important question. Um, as you know, valproic acid is not uh, a drug of choice for women, uh, uh, for pregnant women. So uh, another alternative would be um, uh, lamotrigine, uh, which can be used, but needs those adjustment uh, based on uh, drug labels. And uh, here, the uh, Azza ask about uh, what's the, what are the recommendations regarding if it is some uh, adjustment to the pregnancy, should we do drug level? Sorry, what did, what's the question, Dr. Jumana? What's, what are what? the recommendations yeah, regarding the, if it is some adjustment to pregnancy, what's the rule of adjustment? Okay, as Dr. Mehla, she mentioned already in the uh, presentation, she was talking about the drug levels. When are you going to uh, monitor and which drugs are at risk of reduction? She mentioned that nomotrigine is one of the drugs which might be uh, reduced even in the first trimester. And the other drugs might drop in the second trimester. And from the drugs which we need to do caution and monitor always, the you have the oxycarbazabine and you have the lamotrigine, you have the uh, tubinamate, you have uh, also the um, tigritol. So um, some drugs you have to monitor very frequently, but all the drugs honestly should be monitored. And before mm -hmm. even planning the, uh, the uh, pregnancy, you should have uh, good levels to avoid seizures in the first or second trimester. Most of the uh, recommendations are to do drug levels after uh, the fourth to fifth week, then in the second trimester, you might repeat like after eight to 10 weeks and so on. And the third trimester, you might have, um, you might have only one uh, reading will be enough. But the adjustment of medication is a must. 
and the levels is a must to avoid seizures in the pregnancy. As I mentioned, the Mutrogen should be um, in your attention to do the drug level even in the early trimester. I don't know if Dr. Mehla, she agrees. Oh yes, um, uh, it, it's a must that uh, uh, drug level should be checked frequently if available. And especially Lamotrigin needs special consideration because of its uh, pharmacokinetics. So it's yeah. true. One thing I want to uh, add, if Dr. Mehla allows me, like some people or some places as in Asia or Africa, they don't have the drug levels. They are not available. So you can increase the dose uh, in the second uh, trimester by 30 to 50%. Okay, and this will be a good uh, value for the uh, drug uh, in the patient body. If you don't have a drug level, just increase the dose by 30 to 50%. I agree, yeah. And uh, yeah, I have a question, doctor. Uh, what's the, the most protective factor for the seizure in pregnancy women with epilepsy? The most protective factor. Of what? The protective factor of uh, seizure, seizure in pregnancy, yeah, in a pregnancy woman with epilepsy. Prone to uh, have seizures. You predict mean. that if, uh, the seizure will be, uh, the epilepsy will be controlled or not? Yeah, okay, I got the, you. The, the, the drug level and or focality of epilepsy, uh, body therapy. Exactly. You have the type of seizures. Seizure. You have and what's the yeah. most one? Yeah. Can we predict the control of the seizure? I think the control of seizure pre pregnancy is the one of the things which is a good predictive value. I don't mm -hmm. know if Dr. Mehla she agrees. One of the things, like be a patient, usually, the Dr. Mehla she mentioned in her presentation, people who have seizures should come or visits at least, I'm saying at least six to one year, six months to one year before pregnancy, just to check the drug levels, just to check the seizures. If there is any need of adjustment of medication, uh, if you cannot control seizures, uh, and I don't, I want to take experience of Dr. Mehla here. If you cannot control seizures or patient is on polytherapy hard to control. For me, I would go with the same medication. I will not do interruption during pregnancy. If the woman is already pregnant, I will not do interruption to avoid, like I can, uh, to avoid seizures because seizures in pregnancy can increase the patient uh, possibility of death. So I might, I might, uh, after discussing with the family, if the patient is on polytherapy, she's already pregnant. There is um, no much to do for her in pregnancy. Like if I would reduce any of the medication, this will cause refractory seizures. I will just discuss with her that her life is important. And we have to keep this thing in mind and inform her about the possible of congenital anomaly. And I will do a fetal amino synthesis if there is possibility or monitor the uh, patient growth uh, from the uh, uh, third to uh, fourth week of gestation and keep on monitoring the, uh, the fetus uh, continuously. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Andy. We have uh, another question from uh, Edwin about uh, asking about the rules of uh, prebanal and pregnant uh, and postpartum uh, lady. Um, yeah. I, I have to be honest with you. I have no experience with this. Uh, uh, maybe uh, Nora can help. Yes, I, the, unfortunately, the literature is very small. There was a study, I think, conducted 2020 or 2021. And it says that it has a relation with growth retardation. The patient fetus growth retardation, it has a relation with it. But as I said, all the new medications, sometimes we just prescribe them and say they're safe because we don't have enough data. But one of the medications which was tested was pirambenil, and they showed that it has some uh, effect on the fetus and it has some growth retardation issues, cleft palate and other abnormalities, I think, yeah. I think I went to a study like this. And um, another question from uh, Feridi uh, Bartama. Uh, if the patient already stopped the vibrates and uh, can we change? Uh, I don't know, I, that's not a clear question. Can we stop and change the anti-epileptic uh, drugs? Um, I think maybe uh, yeah, I, I think about I during pregnancy. I think I understand the question. It, it's going, it meant to ask if a lady uh, while taking Varporate becomes pregnant, what do we do? 
Oh, okay. during break, that can we stop and change? Oh, yeah, yeah, I get it. So, um, the, there is no uh, one uh, best uh, good option for this case, but uh, as soon as uh, a lady founds out that she's pregnant and on valporic acid, it should be changed immediately and um, um, fetal monitoring for uh, congenital malformations at uh, 19 or 21 weeks of gestation by doing uh, alpha fetoprotein or even amniosynthesis uh, should be done. Uh, maybe Dr. Nora can help with her experience as well in this. I agree with you, doctor. Like if there is, if the seizures are controlled, a patient, patient already left the medication without any seizures in between. Uh, her EEG is not suggestive of any like, like we can uh, refer to know the type of seizure that she has also to choose the another other uh, medication. Like if she has a juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, she can go to levetra acetam. She can go to. I think uh, lamotrigine will be a choice also, but more likely for us, we shift to le levetiracetam. Yeah, and here the another question, Sim, you already answered about uh, the question. Uh, here, the last question is uh, Sami. Uh, what's the optimum dose of folic acid of a pregnant uh, woman? Well, already, we, Dr. Zanibek yeah. Yeah, mentioned 0.4 to 4 yeah, milligram. Day. Maybe I can say a few words on here. Uh, folic acid in principle should be started before getting pregnant for everyone, um, and but should be continued at least for the third uh, for the first three months in pregnancy. Um, folic acid dosing uh, depends on uh, the risk category of a woman. So if a woman with uh, low risk of uh, having a congenital malformation. Uh, can take a lower dose of folic acid, maybe 0.4, 2.8 milligrams uh, per day. But if a woman who had a previous child with a neural tube defect, or if a lady is on uh, valporic acid or maybe phenobarb phenytoin uh, or high risk group, they should uh, start with a high dose of folic acid, maybe as high as uh, four milligrams. Back to you, uh, uh, Jumana. The question, yeah. Um, um, I think we finished all the questions. Thank you, Dr. Zanibegas, um, for your presentation. Excellent, and you cover all the points. Um, sure. I don't know Thank if you. any, Dr. Nora. Thank you, Dr. Mehla, and we have really. Um, it was really great, informative presentation. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Dr. Jumana. Thank you. Finally, we come uh, to the end part of the, uh, the webinar. And we would like to say thanks again to Dr. Zalbigas and to the audience for active participation. And hopefully the presentation will be beneficial for everybody. Thank you for everybody. The Global Health and Epilepsy Project database provides a registry of existing epilepsy projects throughout Africa and Eastern Mediterranean, as well as in other regions. It's identified uh, information such as project location, institution partners, project scope, uh, funding sources, and volunteer needs. The database is quick and easy to complete. By submitting information on your project, you inform understanding of efforts that are occurring throughout the world to narrow the epilepsy treatment gap. The database will provide you an opportunity to learn from others and to explore collaboration opportunity 
that might strengthen your own work as well as that of the sector. Furthermore, the database will allow people from different areas, such as government, academy, academia, nonprofit, and uh, philanthropy to learn about existing effort while offering a mean to engage. On the next slide, please scan the QR code to receive your certificate. Also, there's a link in the chat box now to the certificate. Thank you.